Hello boys and welcome back to Combat Level Up. Today we are here again in Every State Independent Season 2. Oh boy. Last episode was really good actually. We saw quite a lot of development happening. Um, a lot of countries popped as uh, key picks for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's look through uh, sort of what happened real quick before we start. If you guys remember, the Greeks uh, were having a really uh, fun war to watch. We have the Peloponnese in the south invading Ipirus, they'd already annexed Athens. We also have Macedonia from Central Macedonia originally that has annexed uh, both the Macedonias. This Macedonia is competing with Peloponnese for Epirus right now. Epirus only has three provinces left, so whoever takes the most of it is going to get to annex it. As you guys can see, Macedonia only has one division, but Peloponnese actually has two, so that gives Peloponnese a massive edge in case these two Greek states go to war. Also in the region, Montenegro is doing fairly well. Kolovdiv from uh, Bulgaria is doing good. Izmit has taken a state. Istanbul is still a, quite an active threat, uh, but nothing out of the Middle East is really popping so far. Now guys, we also saw this Polish state doing super good. We I think there's like seven or six or seven states under their control right now, which is absolutely insane. Very far ahead of uh, most of the others. In the British Isles, we have London and uh, the East Midlands sort of doing the best here. We also have Cornwall not doing too bad. Um, and then up in Scotland, but where Edinburgh is, uh, it's doing the best. Now in China, my boy uh, Guangdong isn't doing the best, but you know, there's hope. There's always hope. Peta is also expanding the country that formed the Great Indochinese Empire, the Great Indochina Empire last season. So Peta doing pretty good there. And in the Americas and South America, nothing really popping yet except for British Guiana which has three states under its control already which is pretty ahead of that area. Holland is also another one that is pretty far ahead one two three four states under their control and of course we were watching uh, drama in Italy unfold where uh, Piedmont was fighting against Florence and it was doing pretty good until Savoy invaded Piedmont and it gave Florence a chance to invade up into Piedmont and Florence was actually the one that got to annex it so I'm sure Savoy's a little salty they are going after Switzerland instead now but as you can see they've drawn up army plans even though they're at war with Switzerland they've put their division on their army plan against Florence. Bosnia is doing fairly good too and Sudetenland just to name a few I can't name them all obviously but um, we're gonna have to watch and see what happens boys so put your seatbelts on let's go look at this guy Krasnodar they are doing pretty good as well looks like they've got Crimea under their belt. Franken look at that uh, a massive power now in the south of Germany. Both of the Bavarias are now annexed into it, so it's very big. It's actually only four states, which is still bigger than most in this region. So I would say, though, that Franken is looking like a pretty big competitor to Kalis, the uh, Germans versus the Poles now at this point. Here's something pretty cool. Um, out of all the states in Portugal last season, Guarda was doing the best, and it appears they're doing that again. They've got three states under their belt, and they're doing very well against Galicia. So... Um, they might have a fourth fairly soon. Guarda was very close to forming all of Iberia, but Aragon was the one that actually came out on top when it was the last two, Aragon versus Guarda. And look at that, Tuscany annexing another one. They just annexed the Lombardy. So Tuscany doing very well, now going against Emilia Romagna, uniting the north of Italy. It actually looks really cool, and it'd be really cool to see if Tuscany was able to form a nation. And it does look like they have two divisions at this point. Unless that's, no, that's Eastern Switzerland. Okay, so yeah, Florence still is doing all this with one division. Russia, it's quite hard to make a pick out of who's doing the best over here, but there's quite a few uh, countries that are doing specifically well. Odessa, doing fairly well with four states under their belt. Um, Tula, I've noticed three states. And Sumi, uh, also three states. Kurzemi over here in the Baltics is looking really fun. They've got three states and of course they're invading some other stuff. And still the uh, Middle East is extremely fractured. I think if we were going to see a winner out of the Middle East it would have to have unfractured fairly early. Cairo though in Africa looking very cool. They've annexed a couple more um, desert states but they appear to be doing the best in the region. Also, it looks like the Greek war for uh, Ipirus is over. Ipirus has been annexed into the Peloponnese. So, oh, look at that. They're not even at war with Macedonia. They're at war with the Aegean Islands who have annexed Izmir, which is really cool. Izmir was not annexed by a continental state. It was annexed by an island state. I think that's going to be really hard for Peloponnese to take, which might stop them from expanding for a little while, but we'll have to see. 
Macedonia is instead at war with little old Bulgaria, who's actually also fighting Istanbul. So if Macedonia starts doing really good, they take Bulgaria, they might end up taking Istanbul as well. So the Aegean Islands have been pushed out of their capital province already, but they have quite a bit of territory to be pushed into. Brittany declared war on Isle of France. Oh wait, Peloponnese get declared war on? Oh, they did. I think they uh, got declared war on by the Macedonians? Or they declared war on the Macedonians while they're already at war with someone else? Interesting, very weird, but interesting. They do have two divisions, so they will be able to fight them both. Look at this, boys. Brittany out of France, suddenly doing very well. One, two, three, four states under their belts. And look at Cornwall. Whoa, Cornwall caught up uh, very fast in the fight for Britain because I believe... Um, East, well not East Anglia, East Midlands and London have just been fighting each other and not paying very much attention to everyone else. So Cornwall might actually end up being the one that wins it all. In Spain, Mercia um, doing pretty good, attacking down into Granada at this point. And Tuscany has finally annexed Emilia Romagna, so the north of Italy is looking pretty good. Back over to China, how many states is this? Oh, that's quite a few. There's three states here in Mandalay. No coastal states though. My boy Guangdong is still holding on against the evil oppressive Hunan Empire. Other than that, I really don't see much. Let's check on Japan. It looks like the central nation of uh, Nagoya is doing the best here in Japan, except the southern one is doing pretty good too. I can't rule it out. They both have four states under their belt. The central one is three, the southern one is four, and they're competing for Kansai, the, the central one. In South America, it looks like um, Santiago is uniting Chile, which is really cool to see. And British Guyana is losing to Bolivar, even though Bolivar is losing to other countries. Panama actually annexed Costa Rica. And El Salvador is fighting a massive... Oh, Guangdong, no! <laughs> Guys, dicks out for Guangdong, I'm serious, jeez. Peter Roberts and his authoritarian regime are gone. <laughs> As I was saying, El Salvador is fighting a pretty big war against Nicaragua? Yeah for Central America. And back to the Americas, Illinois is building a pretty good empire. New York actually annexed all of uh, New England. Tamaulipas uh, appears to be doing pretty good in Mexico, and Texas is struggling with Oklahoma at this point. Savoy is desperately trying to catch up to Tuscany at this point. Tuscany just exploded um, into doing very well. They're invading up into Switzerland. Tuscany is now invading down into Rome, and Rome seems to be defenseless. Oh, it's because they're fighting Ancona. Istria also annexed Venice, so if Tuscany finishes off Rome, that would be a nice addition to the Empire right here. And it's done, boys. Tuscany has annexed Rome, but they're not going after um, Istria. They're actually going after Ancona, or what is the state called? Abruzzo. Okay, they have other plans. I'm sorry. Trying to make sense of what's going on down here in Africa as well, because I don't want to leave these other regions out, but it looks like, um, oh, that's a pretty big beast deal, actually. Let's go back up to Europe for a sec. Istanbul, Olatenia, and, all, and Central Macedonia. They all took one state from Plovdiv in Bulgaria. So it looks pretty bad. As you can see, Olatenia has just this disgusting borders here. Istanbul doesn't even connect to its territory, but Central Macedonia doesn't look that bad. Also, I've just noticed Jordan has annexed Iraq, except for Baghdad, except for the Baghdad region. So Jordan is um, uniting uniting the Middle East. They're doing the job. Also Yemen, uniting the Arabian Peninsula fairly well. But down here in Africa, it looks like these two states are pretty much united at this point. Um, Transvaal is at war with them. It's basically just Botswana. I've also just realized Cornwall has three divisions, so they're able to fight the war against, I believe, London. And they've started a new war against whoever Newcastle's capital is. Lancashire? I'm not sure. I hope that's right. Holland is fighting a war against Calais, I can see. And it appears to be going good and bad. They probably only have, like, oh, wow. Holland has three divisions. But so does Calais. Ooh, that's a pretty big war. Okay, boys, it's official. Savoy and Tuscany are at war. So Tuscany has to fight off, wow, three countries. I did not realize it was at war with South Tyrol as well. It might be able to muster up a big enough army to do that, except probably not because Savoy just got out their second division. Tuscany has only two. South Tyrol appears to have one. And Ancona, or Abruzzo, also has one. So... They have to fight off four divisions with two divisions. The rise of Tuscany might end in a beautiful fall. All right, boys, so out of the Americas, New York is appearing to be one of the stronger countries. They've annexed New England. Of course, they've gotten all of New York, a very large territory, but they've also now annexed Southern Ontario, and they're invading into Northern Ontario. They've taken the capital, so that's pretty important to who's going to get the territory. Franken 
continues to grow. Württemberg is now under its belt. It's going after South Tyrol now. So it's going to be getting involved with um, Austrian and Italian affairs at this point. Utah just annexed Nevada. Rest in peace. Holland was just annexed by Pas de Calais. Rest in peace. We watched the Brides of Holland. They just didn't make it. But what a country to come out of that though. Pas de Calais is doing very good. Um, they are definitely up there with Brittany at this point for the French countries. That just means we're not going to have a winner out of the low countries. Yes, and it appears Savoy has also gotten out its third division, which it looks like Tuscany also has as well, or maybe even their fourth division. Tuscany appears to be just really trying to finish off the war with Abruzzo as quick as possible so that they can rush back up north and defend, which makes sense. South Tyrol is not going to be much help to the coalition against Tuscany because they're now being invaded by arguably the largest country in Europe or the, one of the more powerful countries in Europe. Actually, all of Franken only has two divisions. So remember that, boys. It's actually not that powerful. It just appears more powerful. And yes, Tuscany has finished off Abruzzo, so it can now focus its four divisions up north. Actually, looks like maybe one got encircled, or I just mistook one for a fourth. It looks like it has three. Savoy versus Tuscany, the biggest anime battle of all time, boys. Panama is now spreading its wings down into the continent, so that's interesting to see if they do good there. El Salvador doing very well against Yucatan. It looks like Arizona annexed all of Baja California, as well as Sonora, so Arizona doing pretty good against Mexico. The Oman has declared war on the Yemen. Well, that is very threatening coming from you, Oman, seeing as Yemen is very big, but their one division is very far away from the Omanese border. Oman also only has one division. I think Oman thinks that they have time to seize on Yemen while they're distracted, and they still only have one division. And look at Cairo too, boys. Cairo continues to grow. It's at war with um this guy, Aswan, if that's how you say that. So Cairo with its, looks like two divisions, at war with Aswan with its two divisions. Egypt is looking like it's going to get united one way or the other. Also, we have a power up in the north, Alexandria with uh, one division. Also a threat. It looks like it's, no, two divisions. It's invading Libya at the moment. But all right, boys. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this episode, make sure to hit like, favorite, and subscribe if you guys are new. Tell me what you thought. Leave your comments. Who you think is going to win? Who are your picks? Please let me know. And I'll see you boys all next time. Peace.